It's one of my favorite songs from when I was a kid. Yeah, grocery store. Hello, Hudson. Good morning. Can you say good morning? Good morning. I'm dog sitting for my mom this week, and uh, her dog won't eat the dry food, so I've been told that if I cook up a bunch of turkey and put it in the dry food, he'll eat it. So it's 8 a.m. and I'm making breakfast for the dog. <laughs> turkey breakfast. Ground turkey breakfast. <laughs> First day of preschool. Mm. It's Monday. This record. Twenty-four tracks of genius on one record. If you, if you don't have this, I don't think it's too bold a statement to say that if you, if you don't have this record, if you're not listening to this record, if you're not digesting this record, especially at the beginning, on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis, good luck being a jazz saxophone player. This is definitely a major chapter in the Bible of jazz saxophone. It's not the Old Testament. You've got obviously Lester Young and Coleman Hawkins and Sidney Bechet and all that, but like this is certainly like the middle. I mean, obviously there's Coltrane and there's a lot of stuff, but. I so this is, if there were a bi if there were a jazz saxophone Bible, then this is a giant, giant, giant portion of that Bible. Now, I can't play, this is one of the problems with YouTube. I'd love to show you some music. Like, I, I get this question, very frequently on YouTube, I can't I can't really play music because it flags it for copyright content purposes. And then every time I've tried to use some music, even short bit, bits of it in a video, then people can't see it in other countries. It's just a big pain in the butt. So I'm gonna do something different. Uh, I'll put a link below. I'm gonna share some of this music with you, um, but I'll do it, I gotta do it like through my website, through audio or something. I'm gonna figure that out. Probably just like an MP3 uh, that I'll send to you. So just look for the link below. I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but I, when I do it, there'll be a link right there. And we'll do it with audio because I'd love to share some of this stuff with you, but yeah. Today is September 11th. To some of you that date might not mean much. I realize it's like part of the history books now. It means a lot to me. I was living in New York at the time of September 11th, 2001. I actually watched that entire thing go down from my rooftop in Astoria, Queens. And my, my wife, at the time girlfriend, we were running between our television set um, and the roof. Uh, here it is. Uh, this, this one? Not for nothing, I think. Yeah, Dave Holland, not for nothing. So that day, September 11th, 2001, at the time, I was living in New York City, obviously, and I, I had, a, had a job, a day job. It, wasn't, it didn't really happen during the daytime necessarily, but I worked for Red Bull Energy Drink. I was part of a small team of what they called METS, Mobile Energy Team. And we'd have these backpacks filled with Red Bull, and we'd run around Manhattan in pairs of two. In pairs of two? That's redundant. And we would give Red Bull to people, but we didn't just like hand it out. We had to educate them, so we had to tell them all, because they people thought it was beer at the time. The night before, September 10th, 2001, me and the person I was working with were down around the World Trade Center area, and we took a break. We went to a Borders Books and Music that was in five World Trade Center. It was in the bottom of the World Trade Center. I bought this CD at that Borders, at that Borders Books and Music. Look at this, like young Chris Potter here. Dave Holland's like, what's, what's with the goatee, man? I saved the receipt. Five World Trade Center. This gives me chills just looking at it. 9, 10, 2001 at 5.49 p.m. That's a little over 12 hours before the first plane hit the World Trade Center. I was sitting in the plaza of the world, like five World Trade Center. It's, it was like, it was like this. Okay, there's the World Trade Center towers. Here's this big plaza where they had like music concerts in the summer. In fact, I had played there that summer with Walter Beasley, the, the smooth jazz saxophonist who had been one of my teachers at Berkeley. And then this is Five World Trade Center and this is where I was sitting. So this was Borders and there was a mall in there. And that's where I was sitting, like reading the liner notes to the CD at basically 6 p.m. on September 10th, 
2011 and I went home from my shift that night and I went to bed and I woke up the next day to... I remember for a while I was pretty convinced I wasn't gonna be a musician at that point. We were all just like, what do we do now? I just remember thinking I should join the CIA or the military. It was, I was fresh out of college. I graduated college in 2000. I was looking on the website for the CIA to see like what the requirements were to enter the clandestine service. I mean, it seems ridiculous now, but at the time, what seemed ridiculous was playing music or trying to pursue that as a profession. I mean, it was just, oh, it was so bizarre. When I really stop and, and think about it, just even this, looking at this silly diagram and, and looking at that receipt is enough to take me back to that day in an instant. And uh... anyway, Jay and Jose are coming over today and Ross for another uh, West Coast Bebop session rehearsal. So I should get this place looking presentable. One, two, one, two.